Welcome to another movie plot. Looking forward to the storm. It begins in California with college student Lewis talking on the phone to his childhood friend Venna. He's had a crush on her forever and with the news of the recent split from her boyfriend, Lewis offers to pick her up from Colorado and give her a lift home to New Jersey for the summer. After purchasing a gas-guzzling Chrysler Newport, Lewis leaves to pick her up when the first hitch in the road comes in the form of a call from his mother. She informs him that his older brother's been arrested in Salt Lake City, so being the good sibling that he is Lewis makes a detour to see his estranged brother Fuller for the first time in years. Lewis pays off his bail and Fuller tags along for the ride, but it's not long before he finds the recent purchase order and deduces that Lewis's spontaneous road trips all for a girl. At the mention that she may be using him for his car, Lewis pulls over and lets Fuller know that he isn't the little brother anymore. They pull into a gas station where Lewis talks on the phone to Venna about seeing each other the next day, giving Fuller enough time to talk a mechanic down to 40 bucks for a CB radio to be installed in the Chrysler. The rest of the day the two begin listening in on chatter within a 5 mile radius, particularly from one deadpan trucker who goes by the handle Rusty Nail and preaches about a storm coming to wash the filth away. Gonna rain hard tonight. In a moment of spontaneous realization that Lewis does a great impersonation of a woman, Fuller coaxes him into playing a prank on Rusty by pretending to be a woman with a handle candy cane. His phony description of himself as an attractive blonde fully convinces the truck driver while even getting his brother at half-mast. Once they get too far away from the trucker their signals lost and the boys funds ended, so they continue on until nighttime where they pull into the Lone Star Motel to check in. The silver-tongued Fuller goes inside to work his magic and get them a deal on a room, but a racist man shouting at the clerk gets physical and tells him to wait his turn. While waiting for his brother, Rusty Nail returns asking for candy cane but Lewis sits frozen worried that he may have started something. When Fuller gets back the two notice the aggressive man checking into the room right next door to them, so the bad influence convinces his brother to prank both men at the same time by setting up a meeting between them, giving Rusty Nail the impression that he's gonna get laid. They tell Rusty that Candy Cane will meet him in room 17 at midnight and to bring a bottle of pink champagne. Awesome! That night the two brothers reminisce about their childhood and forget about the meeting, until hearing Rusty pull in and approach the motel. Fuller's unable to get a clear look at him as he goes next door and knocks on room 17, only to be greeted by an angry businessman woken at an early hour. The brothers listen in from the adjoining room and hear the argument quickly turn into a scuffle before silence, which has Lewis worried that they may have just got the truck driver killed, so he gets on the phone to management to report a disturbance next door but the clerk just calls the room. After hearing Rusty Nail as the one talking back on the phone, they get a call back to say that everything's fine but giving away their position. The next morning Lewis wakes up to find Fuller out front being questioned by the police. Officer Aiken says they found the businessman face down on the highway and Fuller's a pretty good suspect due to his criminal past and brief run-in with the man. The two pretend like they heard a scuffle from the room but know nothing about Rusty or the reason he was here. As a scare tactic to get more information out of them Aikens takes them to the hospital to show them the victim, who's still alive but in a coma after having his lower jaw removed and being thrown from a moving truck. After Lewis admits that they played the prank on Rusty Nail, they're taken to the station and chewed out by Sheriff Ritter for their role in the incident, but he's unable to hold them for anything criminal and takes the two back to the motel. Fuller's disappointed in his brother for telling the cops but Lewis feels responsible for nearly getting a man killed. They get back on the road and it's not long before Rusty Nail's heard on the radio again asking if anyone knows Candy Cane. Fed up with his constant asking Fuller gets on the CB and warns Rusty that the police are looking for him but he just keeps asking for candy, so Lewis reveals that it was just a prank making the trucker demand an apology. When Fuller insults him instead Rusty lets them know that they should get their taillight fixed, indicating that he's following them but leaving them unaware of what truck he's driving. So Lewis quickly takes the next exit and pulls into a gas station to call the sheriff while Fuller refuels the car. Moments later an ice truck pulls in behind Fuller into the station making him nervous, as the driver exits with his tire thumper and follows Lewis inside. Fuller's left trying to get his attention and with the sheriff not being in his office, Lewis hangs up and nervously pays for the gas before quickly scurrying back to the car, but the trucker comes out chasing him down with a purpose. The brothers almost crash escaping in their busted Chrysler and are unable to even gain enough speed to outrun the pursuing truck. They take a back street but he corners them on a dead-end road, but turns out to just be a kind stranger trying to return Lewis's credit card after he left it behind at the gas station in a panic. With a sigh of relief the two laugh it off as the stranger begins to leave in his truck, when the real rusty nail crashes through it and continues chasing the boys down the road. Lewis manages to give him the slip but in his distraction crashes sideways into a tree and gets the car stuck. 
Instead of plowing into them Rusty begins to slowly crush the car against the tree with the screaming siblings inside, when Fuller hysterically apologizes causing the trucker to put on the brakes. They express that they were simply doing it for fun which makes Rusty nail laugh into the radio, then declare that his actions were all simply a joke in retaliation and reverses away into the darkness. Believing themselves safe albeit a little shaken up the boys get the car fixed and back on the road, where Fuller throws the radio out the window the moment they hear static. They get to Venice College in Colorado and pick her up where she's happy to see Louis but not so much his brother. Her friend Charlotte's also leaving for the summer but turns down Fuller's offer to join them despite driving in the same direction. The three begin their journey together with Venna driving whenever the boys sleep until eventually pulling into a truck stop to pick up supplies. She thanks Louis for giving her a lift and they almost kiss, before Fuller spoils the moment by pointing out that his brother's blushing. Next they stop at a motel and spend time at the bar, where Fuller and Venna begin their friendship by both being able to relate to tying a cherry stem with their tongues. When Louis goes to the bathroom Venna goes to the bar to get them some more drinks, and begins getting harassed by a drunk local hoping the girl's looking to make a mistake. When Lewis returns the man and his friends start on him, so Fuller intervenes pretending that he's a redneck hillbilly too and that Venna just got out of her cage. She stays in the room next door to the boys who spend the night watching a movie, and when Lewis falls asleep Fuller goes over to make a move on the technically single Venna. She invites him in and they begin sharing stories from their childhood, when Lewis wakes up to a call from Rusty Nail saying that he's seen the girl to put the fear back in the brothers that he's still following them. In a panic the brothers think of what they should do while Venna's just confused, but joins them in fleeing from the motel and getting back on the road. While letting Venna know what's going on with the short explanation that they did something to a guy who put someone in a coma, Fuller notices messages from Rusty spray-painted on road signs instructing Lewis to look in the trunk. Inside they find the radio Fuller threw from the car and reinstall it allowing Rusty Nail to contact them again, who already knows Venna's name as he's kidnapped her college friend Charlotte who's heard screaming in the background. He says he'll take her apart piece by piece unless they go to the state line truck stop and wait for his next orders. Once there he forces the two brothers to walk inside the truck stop naked and order six cheeseburgers to feel what it's like when people have a laugh at your expense. While Venna waits in the car alone she says that sometimes people do things not thinking about how it affects others, but Rusty Nail replies that's a lesson they're going to have to learn the hard way. He directs them to a cornfield where the three are told to get out and walk a hundred paces forward, then shows up and doesn't slow down just chases them foot flat into the cornfield. They lose him a few times with Rusty relying on his spotlights and movement to find them, but they all get separated when the semi drives straight over top of them barely missing. Now with everyone alone and hiding in their own parts of the field, Rusty Nail exits his truck and sneaks around until finding Venna and snatching her. When the brothers realize that she's not with the other they begin arguing, then hear her screaming from the burning Chrysler but rush to find it's just coming from the radio. In order to get her back, Rusty sets up a meeting at a nearby motel in room 17 with a bottle of pink champagne to mirror their first date, where he sets up a trap that'll kill Venna if the doors open but the brothers realize there's multiple motels on the strip. They scramble from one room 17 to another getting one wrong after another while Rusty reports multiple dead bodies to the police. When Lewis and Fuller finally get to the correct motel, they find the room empty and receive a call from Rusty from next door in number 18. He asks if that's what they did to him is listen to him through the walls, while Lewis keeps him talking and Fuller sneaks around back of the motel to try rescue Venna. He locates her through the window but the real Rusty attacks him, and holds his hand over Fuller's mouth while forcing him to watch Lewis enter the front door and blow Venna's head off. Before he opens it Fuller's able to slip free and shouts for Lewis to stop, but falls on a metal bar in the process impaling him through the thigh and getting pinned by Rusty. Lewis races around the building to find Fuller now strung up on a fence and Rusty getting a running start at the motel in his truck. He attempts to free him but the police get to the scene and find the motel clerk dead, before beginning their standard process of kicking in every door in the motel. Venice still strapped into the trap on the other side trying to free herself with nails she's pulling from the seat, only to keep dropping them as the cops get closer and closer to room 18. Pain-stricken Fuller tells his brother to leave him and save Venna from the trap, and Lewis barely manages to pull her chair to the side before the blast goes off and just misses her. He then flees from the entering officers and leaps back out the window to his brother to free him. When police see the real situation and Rusty puts his foot on the gas, the officers open fire while others get Venna free and Lewis is able to get Fuller out of the way, all managing to avoid the truck plowing through the side of the motel completely destroying room 18. As the police investigate they see a dead body in the driver's seat and Charlotte still alive in the back. While Lewis Fuller and Venna are treated for their injuries on scene, the dead man inside the trucks identified to them as being an ice truck driver out of Wyoming. 
realizing that it's only the friendly truck driver who returned Lewis's credit card. They once again hear from the radio Rusty Nail's voice saying that he looks forward to the upcoming storm as it washes away all the filth. And the movie ends. Some people like it when it rains. Keeps everybody inside, you know.